Hey everybody, I've got a quick instructional video for you today. I'm gonna to show you how to change the rear differential fluid in your GM 10 bolt, like the one found in this 95 GMC uh, K1500. At the end of the video, uh, it's about eight minutes long, I'll show you kind of all the step-by-step -step things on what to do, um, but at the end of the video, after the eight minutes, I am gonna show you how to also, or talk uh, how you would change the fluid in both your transfer case um, and also your manual transmission. So we will touch on briefly the types of fluids that you'll need for all three of these, um, as well as some of the things that you should know when you're doing the transfer case or your manual transmission. So check it out, let me know what you think, and uh, here, learn how to change your own differential fluid in your 10 bolt. All right, everybody, if you're getting ready to do this, here's a short list of what you're gonna need. A drain pan. Some gloves are a great idea because this stuff is gonna be nasty. Rags, which I don't have shown. A ratchet, you're gonna need both the actual 3 8 portion of the ratchet for the fill plug, a 13 millimeter socket for the bolts, a new gasket like this one from Felpro. Doesn't hurt always to have some penetrant to try and break up any bolts that might be stuck, and three quarts of gear oil. Now, um, don't get hung up on the type of gear oil other than it should be 80-90, um, and you do not need a friction modifier for these trucks. So, three quarts, this is about it. Take your time, number one tip, always try to break loose the fill plug first because if that ain't coming loose you're in big trouble because how are you going to fill it back up so first things first try and break that fill plug loose the fill plug is here on the passenger side you don't need a socket for this you're just going to use your 3 8 drive ratchet to pop in there so go ahead put your ratchet on that and make sure you can break that loose before you go any further because like i said if you go and you break all these bolts loose and drop it and you can't put fluid in there you're in big trouble because these things do not have a separate drain and fill location. I did try to use just a regular 3 8 drive ratchet to break these loose, but they were pretty uh, tight in there, so I swapped over to an impact. As I mentioned, take all the bolts out except for the top two, loosen those, then you can pry on the bottom and drain all the fluid without making a huge mess. Well, got the cover off. Check out that magnet. That is not good. Who knows when the last time this has been changed, but I think it's good that we did it. So we'll clean up all that, scrape all this RTV crap off, and then we'll go in and uh, use the gasket, seal everything back up, and we'll be good. Um, again, normally, man, that's not good. Gross. Get the degreaser of your choice. Get yourself a razor blade, some rags, a wire wheel helps. Get all the big stuff off first with the rag, all of the big chunks and stuff that's stuck on the magnet. Then go ahead with your razor blade and just get that whole perimeter wiped down, get all the big chunks out, and then last hit it with a wire wheel. And then let this soak for 15 minutes. We'll come back, hit it with some water. If you have a pressure washer, even better. Knock all that off. Now we're gonna go over to the diff and see what that looks like. So here's what your ring and pinion and carrier look like. Um, honestly, I'm looking in there and I'm not seeing anything that's like glaringly terrible. If I had a ton of metal shavings and chunks there in the bottom, and I'm going to try and get a rag and scoop that out, but um, I don't see anything major. I mean, the gear mesh is going to be what it's going to be, right? I mean, you're not going to go and change it up at this point unless you totally redo everything. You would think that if you had a ton of metal chunks, that if I took a, you know, something like this, scraped along the bottom, there's really not, it's just fluid. You know what I mean? Like I'm not seeing big pieces of gray metal and everything down in here. So like I said, it's not as bad as it could be. This fluid isn't even as dark as I thought it was gonna be. So um, we'll go clean off this surface. Most of the gasket was on the other surface. Um, we'll clean this off real good and then get our gasket, throw everything back together. Okay, not entirely necessary, but while you're waiting for your diff cover that you just degreased to dry and everything to drain, Go ahead and get yourself a 5 16 18 uh, die. Just run your, just run these bolts through them. If you had RTV on them before, it'll help get some of that off. So we'll just go ahead and do this real fast. You don't have to do this, but again, it just cleans up the threads, makes them go in a little easier. One thing to note, one of them is gonna be longer than the other ones, and this is the one that needs to go over the bracket that's larger. So just remember that this one goes in one spot. All the other ones should all be the same length. That is the part number for the Felpro gasket. You do not need sealant if you use this gasket. Okay, y'all saw the before. Couldn't even tell that was a magnet, so it's all clean now. Got our gasket on there. 
and uh, I'm going to try and throw this up in place. Just put a couple bolts in, and then you want to go around in a star pattern and tighten it down. I'll look up what the torque spec should be. I'm not going to put any sealant on this. I might put a dab of RTV towards the top of the threads. Um, we'll see. Uh, I haven't decided quite yet on that one, but maybe just put those in dry. Um, all right, get down on there and uh, go ahead and put it up. You're gonna be careful because you've got the parking brake cable, I think it is, or one of the brake cables at the top, and you've got to slide this underneath it. So take your time, don't bend the gasket, move stuff out of the way, make sure you're comfortable before you put this in because if you kink this gasket or rip it, it's gonna leak. As I had mentioned before, there is one bolt of the 10 bolts that is longer than the rest, and that one goes up top where the brake cable is. You'll notice that, so just make sure you use that bolt in that location, and then the others can go wherever you like. Just snug them up for now. Well, the camera fell over there, um, so you missed the last couple, but get them all on, just, you know, snug, and then you grab your torque wrench, 20 foot-pounds, all the cover bolts. I've seen 20, I've seen 22, I think 20 will be fine. You don't want to go too crazy on these and risk, you know, breaking off the head of a bolt. So 20 is more than enough for those. We'll tighten them up and then we'll add the fluid. Since I know there's going to be some people that disagree with me here and say, oh no, you got to leave the fluid below the fill. Read this. This is the GMC Sierra 1995 owner's manual, page 632. It says, if it's below the fill hole, add fluid. So we're gonna fill it up until it runs out and stops running out and that will be full. Also, if you were curious about the specifications, we gotta flip around here. I think it's 798. And what it's gonna tell you is 8090 gear oil. So, regardless of whether you have the standard or the locking differential, you need SAE 8090 GL5 gear oil, no additive. Okay, pro tip. If you're doing it this way, where you're holding the fluid in and you're squeezing it in and you want it to go faster, go ahead and cut a little hole in the top after you've let some out. That'll allow the displaced air to come out and it'll drain much faster. This also works with uh, soup cans when you're making chili and uh, stuff like that in the kitchen. Otherwise, get yourself a pump. Look at that nice felt pro gasket. On that third one, don't go ahead and cut any holes in the bottom because you only need a little bit. Um, I barely put in, I don't know, I probably put in squeezed in half and it's been draining out. So as soon as I saw it coming out, I stopped. We're gonna let it stop dripping and we're gonna wipe it all off then we'll put the plug in, but it's full. You don't wanna overfill these because you will get leaks. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna, we're gonna hope that that was good. Let it stop doing its thing and uh, should be good to go now. Just put the put your cap back in, don't forget that, and uh, go around, drive it, and you're good to go. Okay, so as promised, we are gonna touch on the transfer case as well as uh, the manual transmission. So um, this 8090 gear oil, no friction modifier, that is for your differential only. So we will set that aside. Now, what you are going to need um, go ahead and I would say get yourself three, if not four quarts, just to be totally safe. Um, that's more than you'll need for each of these. But if you get four quarts, look, you can always take a quart back um, if you don't use it. And if you knock over one, you already have it. So just get an extra. Um, basically, the procedure is going to be about the same for both, um, except you're going to use different fluid. And there's one little difference that you're going to have to do. So um, in order to get the drivetrain level so that you get your levels right, you are gonna have to lift up the rear of the truck. So you're gonna have to put a diff, um, jack under your rear differential, um, lift it up, put it on jack stands, obviously, make sure everything is level. Once everything is level, meaning you know it's gonna drain out and give you an accurate reading, um, basically what you do for each is you, first things first, open the fill just to make sure that that bolt is not seized on there, remove that. Then you open your drain, drain your fluid out, make sure it's all out, go ahead, put your uh, drain plugs back in, start filling it up until it starts to leak out. And then once it leaks out um, and stops leaking, it's level, you're done. So sinker mesh. Um, sinker mesh is what you are gonna use in the manual transmission. Just like this stuff right here from Pennzoil, um, you want sinker mesh, okay? 
Um, this is gonna be kind of similar in viscosity to like a motor oil, um, similar color. So, you know, at first glance, it may even look somewhat like the gear oil, but it's not the same thing. This is a much lighter viscosity. It also doesn't smell as bad. That is for your manual transmission. For your transfer case, you want ATF. Now, there is some back and forth regarding um, the type of ATF. So if you look in the owner's manual, it would have called for Dexron 3. Now, if you look on here, there are newer ones. So the reason that I picked this stuff from STP is because it specifically says in the back Dexron 3. There's many that you'll see that are the newer, the Dexron 5, 6, or whatever they're up to now. Um, and I think there's another brand that makes actually a transfer case fluid, but I like this because it was multi-purpose ATF, but specifically on the back, it talks about Dexron 3. So um, that's what you want for your transfer case. This stuff is not very expensive. Uh, pick up whatever brand you like. Just the fact that you're doing this on your high mileage vehicle is probably a good thing. So differential, manual transmission, transfer case. That's all you gotta know. Hey everybody, I hope you found that video helpful, useful. Um, tune back in next time because we've got some new stuff coming up. I tried to get this thing aligned and I found out that the front end was all beat up. So I'm gonna throw on some new upper control arms, uh, sway bar end links because one was broken, tie rod ends, inner and outer sleeves, uh, pitman arm, all that good stuff. So that will be going on in my next video. But for now, we got all the fluids changed. I think that was a good call. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe. See you next time on Truck and Roll.